Hello, I'm going to talk about uh, free diving and the menstrual cycle. So uh, a few years ago I was on a holiday in Greece and I went out uh, diving every day. And uh, then one morning uh, my dives felt a lot easier and more relaxed. The contractions came later and yeah, everything just felt better. And later on that day I had my period. Uh, and this got me to f uh, thinking if there's a connection between uh, the menstrual cycle and um, how uh, free diving and breath holding feels. So I began googling um, free diving and the menstrual cycle. However, <laughs> the only results I found uh, uh, was people who were worried about um, if they were going to get attacked by sharks if they were diving while on their period. So this is not an issue by the way, but uh, this uh, got me interested in how the menstrual cycle can affect free diving. So uh, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about how the menstrual cycle works. Uh, so the most important thing uh, is the uh, fluctuations of uh, sex hormones uh, such as uh, estrogen and progesterone uh, and the length of a normal cycle is considered to be between uh, 24 and 35 days uh, and the cycle can be um, uh, divided into two phases uh, the first one called the follicular phase and the second one called the luteal phase so for the follicular phase um, it uh, begins uh, on the first day of your period and lasts uh, until ovulation. And this one is between uh, 14 to 23 days. Um, and it can vary a lot uh, between individuals, but also uh, for one individual, the length of the uh, follicular phase can uh, vary between different cycles. Uh, and this phase is also characterized by low levels of uh, progesterone and uh, low levels of estrogen um, in the beginning and then rising levels of estrogen later on uh, in the phase. Uh, and you also have a lower uh, basal body temperature and um, a lower resting heart rate. So the second phase is called the luteal phase and it uh, begins at ovulation and lasts until you get your period. And this uh, phase is often 14 days long, plus minus a few days, uh, but it's usually the same length uh, for one individual. So it can vary a little bit between individuals, but for the same person, it's usually the same length every cycle. And uh, in this phase, you have high levels of progesterone and also high levels of estrogen. Uh, you also have a higher basal body temperature and a higher resting heart rate. Uh, so here uh, we have uh, an example of uh, two uh, cycles. Uh, so the red part is uh, the period, which you can see in the beginning. The black line is uh, the basal body temperature, so you can see it's low in the uh, follicular phase uh, in the beginning. And then uh, once you reach ovulation, which is indicated by the yellow star, uh, the basal body temperature increases. And then as uh, the second cycle begins, as you get your period, the basal body temperature drops quite steeply and uh, the pattern is uh, repeated. Okay, so back to my holiday in Greece. I mentioned that uh, on the day I got my period, uh, the contractions began feeling easier and milder. So it was actually not until uh, about one year ago that I discovered that this is um, something that has been uh, common 
knowledge for about a century uh, that females uh, have higher uh, levels of CO2 in the exhale during the follicular phase and lower levels of carbon dioxide uh, in the air they exhale in the luteal phase. And uh, this uh, de decrease uh, in the luteal phase is caused by an increased ventilation, which in turn is caused by uh, sex hormones. So uh, you can only see this decrease after ovulation. Uh, and you uh, can actually also create this decrease by uh, giving progesterone to males or to um, infertile uh, females. Okay, so uh, now I want to uh, share some uh, personal experiences uh, from um, my training uh, last year. So uh, in this graph, uh, you can see uh, one menstrual cycle that I had, and then I have um, I made some uh, green and yellow dots, uh, which indicate that I had a free diving training session. Uh, and the green dots um, are good sessions that felt, felt nice. I mean, I pushed myself so they were hard, but they still felt nice. Uh, and the yellow dots are <laughs> really terrible sessions uh, where it has been feeling like I'm about to suffocate and uh, but everything is just really bad. So, as you can see, uh, these green dots are uh, very common uh, in the beginning when I have my follicular phase. Uh, and then during the luteal phase, uh, I have more of these um, yellow bad sessions. Uh, and then once my period appears again and a new cycle begins, uh, it feels a lot better all of a sudden. So uh, just to make everything clear, uh, I want to uh, just tell you that uh, these things that I've been talking about uh, does not apply to um, those who use hormonal contraception, such as birth control pills, hormonal IUDs or implants, etc. Uh, and it only applies to uh, cycles where ovulation occurs. So uh, some people can have a bleeding without actually having had an ovulation before and this is called an anovulatory cycle so the important thing here is not the bleeding but it's the hormonal fluctuations uh, which occur once you have an ovulation so what does all this mean for freediving uh, now i'm going to talk about my theories so when it comes to CO2 tolerance, I believe that uh, you have a lower CO2 tolerance in the luteal phase due to sex hormones. Uh, but then also uh, when it comes to hypoxia, uh, I believe that uh, the increased resting heart rate and the increased basal body temperature in the luteal phase leads to an increased metabolism which in turn uh, uh, can lead to a, an earlier hypoxia. But I don't know if this would be mean that the hypoxia would come one second earlier or one minute earlier. So yeah, and I don't know if there's anything else going on that uh, counteracts this. Um, but then um, another thing, um, related to hypoxia is the fact that you have lower levels of CO2 in the luteal phase. Uh, it means that uh, your blood is more alkaline and most free divers know about the Bohr effect. That means that uh, hemoglobin uh, releases um, oxygen uh, for the cells to use 
easier if the um, blood is more acid. Okay, so how do I apply this uh, to my own training? So uh, I try to adapt both intensity and volume according to where I am in my menstrual cycle. So in the follicular phase, I usually uh, I go to training even if I feel a bit tired. Then it's very often more due to laziness. So then I force myself to training, uh, and I try to keep uh, uh, intensity high. That is, I do uh, longer rep holds and uh, longer dives in this uh, time of the cycle, and. In the luteal phase, especially in the late luteal phase, uh, I still try to do, uh, go to training, but if I feel really tired and um, not recovered, uh, I might go easier on myself and give myself a rest day. Uh, and I also do shorter breath holds and shorter dives. Uh, and when it comes to maxing, I try to do my um, max attempts uh, in the follicular phase and a few days uh, after ovulation. Thank you for listening. Uh, please comment if you found this talk interesting. Uh, I would love to hear your experiences.